Yesterday, we talked about how the D6 version of Final Fantasy arguably doesn't quite live up to the laid-back goals due to the equipment and limit system requiring a bit of legwork. Naturally, when taking into account a laid-back approach, I can't help but think of some of the games in the OSR scene, especially since a few of them could have their rules written in one page, and some of them actually do. Naturally, why couldn't we combine the two of them? Take Final Fantasy and go with the simplest setup as possible. This brings us to Omega Fantasy, a game that, while using a D6 system, has an approach that's far more akin to BX D&D in feel, even if it's not in execution. How does it hold up? Let's find out. We'll be returning to Lun as a Dark Knight, with character creation being a much faster affair, effectively a three-step process. First, we choose a talent, which acts as a non-combat skill for the character. We'll go with King's Shield as our talent, and thus gain an advantage on strength-based checks. The second step is Job. Omega Fantasy has 11 jobs compared to the 18 in D6, taking a far more linear approach than the talent-based approach from before. Because of the archetype system, we'll be breaking from tradition and starting at level 4. And we'll be going with the Warrior job and the Dark Knight um, specialization with Heavy Armor. This means that our base stats are the following. Health 50, Mana 37, Strength 3, Defense 3, Resistance 2, Agility 3, and an Evasion DC of 9. Ability-wise, we gain 3 abilities. Rush, Beatdown, and Defense Break. As a Dark Knight, we'll gain the Soul Eater passive, along with the Blood Price reaction. I should note that at level 5, we can take an ability we have and treat it as a Limit Break. Lastly, Equipment. Equipment is treated in a freeform sense, stated to pick what fits. So we'll be going with a Buster Sword, Crystal Mail, and one Potion and one Ether. Character creation, as I hinted at earlier, is really quick. Possibly the quickest of any game we'll see in this series. I'd compare it in a weird way to the playbooks in Powered by the Apocalypse, with the job entry acting as the second page in this regard. The equipment section is the only real nitpick, given how it takes the loose, what fits approach instead of a set amount of gill. Either way, it's a nice, speedy setup. Now, much like Final Fantasy D6, Omega Fantasy uses a 2D6 based system versus a difficulty class. The primary difference is that there isn't a modifier to the rolls. That said, advantage or disadvantage is introduced as an extra die while dropping the, either the highest or the lowest which I approve of. In combat, the attacker is not the one who rolls. Instead, the defender makes a 2d6 roll and compares it to their evasion DC of 12 minus their agility. If they roll snake eyes, the attack deals double damage. If they roll box cards, the attack misses and the defender gets a counterattack. Magic automatically hits, but the disadvantage within magic is the time factor. A given spell will detail how many rounds they have to spend concentrating on that spell. Limit Breaks are a powered-up version of an ability you already have. This can be activated by spending twice the MP you would normally, and may choose between four different effects. Double Damage Slash Recovery, increasing the target range by one step, doubling the duration of the effects, or modifying the difficulty of a check by two. The only thing that really threw me off is that the Defender is the one rolling in combat, because it's been ingrained that the attacker does or both sides do it. That said, because everything in his ability for jobs, I don't have as much of a problem with the mage-non-mage gap as I did yesterday, especially since uninterrupted time is as important of a resource as MP is for casters, arguably more so. Let me get something out of the way quickly. Omega Fantasy accomplishes the laid-back approach in a way better than D6 did. By having this very simple approach to each of the jobs, I could see this bringing more folk who have a background with the 2D era of the video games into the tabletop end of things. Much like an old school game, it's a simple setup with room to hack if need be, and the fact that I've seen a lot of house rules for it speaks volumes. That said, I could see it getting too simple for some, since it doesn't really deviate much beyond equipment. Furthermore, because of the way archetypes work, it could potentially have the same problem that D&D 5th Edition has, where you're not really in your class until you get your subtype. Even so, I'd be willing to give Omega Fantasy a stamp of strongly recommended. Yes, I'm more willing to recommend this than D6. 
The reason why is because I feel Omega sticks to its guns of being a retro style game a little bit better, while still leaving room to make it more complex. Now, if your background is within the likes of Dungeon World or Old School Play, this is going to be right up your alley. However, this is where the simple side of this adventure ends, as the next few games are going to have a fair bit of crunch. Tomorrow, we look to the skies as we explore the Zodiac system.